Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm unboxing two luxury handbags that I purchased recently. I've actually had both of these bags for a few weeks now and I have not shared them on any social platform. I'm not the type of person that just dives right in and rips apart packaging whenever I make a big purchase. Instead, I prefer to kind of savor the moment, slowly unbox and enjoy. So I've been enjoying them in silence for the last few weeks, but now it feels like it's been a while and it's time to share them with the world. One of these bags is replacing my old broken Gucci bag. So I know I told you about that a while ago now. It was a much needed purchase. It's going to be my new everyday bag. The second I'm calling my dream Chanel handbag, which sounds very dramatic. And I think when you see it, you might be let down because it's not some really fancy, sparkly, rhinestone encrusted piece. It looks nothing like my Lady Dior. Instead, it's more wearable. It's very classic, timeless, definitely my style. And it took me over a year to get my hands on that bag. So I cannot wait to share it with you and get your opinion on it. Even though it is more wearable, it's something that I will most likely only use for special occasions. It will go with everything, but I won't take it out all the time. That will make much more sense once I show it to you. So the bags are very different in that way, but one thing they have in common is that I purchased both secondhand, which before this year, I had never done that before. Usually if I invest in a handbag, it's on a rare occasion, but I'll go directly to the boutique. But this time around, Fashion File is where I found both of these bags. I'm going to begin by sharing my new everyday handbag. It is from Celine. And this video is not sponsored by Fashion File, by the way. I have seen them partnering with a lot of influencers, especially on TikTok. But if the day ever comes that Fashion File reaches out to me, you will know because I will be shouting it from the mountaintops. So I purchased both of these myself. This is a bag that I had tried on in store, so I felt really confident in my choice. It is a relatively new, I was gonna say brand new, but it's not. This is a used bag. It's the medium satinated leather Celine 16, a gorgeous handbag. You can see it's black with gold hardware. It comes with the little lock and it has a fashion file tag. You really have to read every single detail of the description of each item on the fashion file website because it tells you everything that the bag comes with, whether it be a dust bag, a box, sometimes an authenticity card. Sometimes even if the item is listed as new, those items won't be included. So you wanna read your description box, the condition, of course. This bag was listed as excellent condition. And from what I've heard from other people, Fashion File in particular is very conservative when listing the condition of the bag. So I knew if it said excellent, even though it's not new or giftable, it would probably be in really great condition. If there are any scuffs or scratches, they will have a picture on the website. So you wanna go through each picture, zoom in, you know, look at every single corner, the usual spots, hardware, which sometimes gets little scratches, the corners. This bag does have little feet on the bottom. That way it never sits directly on the floor and it's in mint condition. When I took this out of the bag the first time and my purse did come in a Celine bag with the Celine lock, but a fashion file tag and a fashion file box. So I don't have a box or an authenticity card with this bag. But when I took it out and I looked at it, kind of was scouring the bag to see if there were any little marks, any little scuffs, nothing which I think is really good because this is the smooth satinated leather instead of the pebbled leather. I really feel like I got so lucky with how great of a condition this bag is in. This looks brand new to me. I mean, it doesn't really look much different than the bags that I saw at the boutique, which a lot of people are trying them on. They can get little scuffs and scratches too, just, you know, from people wearing them and walking around the boutique and showing people this bag looks pristine. It looks like whoever had it probably bought it, put it in the closet, never wore it and decided that they just wanted to get their money back. So let's talk about the price because that was really what drove me to purchase this particular bag. So I told you guys I was in the market for a new everyday bag. I was shopping around, trying on styles, trying to narrow down what I wanted. When I saw this bag in store, I knew it was so beautiful, but the full price 
is $4,500. So if I were to walk into the boutique, I would pay $4,500 plus tax. I kind of thought, eh, it's a beautiful bag, but that is more than I want to pay for something that will most likely show a lot of use and show wear eventually if I'm going to wear it every single day. So I happen to be looking on Fashion File, and because this is not a overly popular, trendy style, you don't see a lot of them on the resale market. Every once in a while, it'll pop up, and you can find a good deal. It's not that it's so extremely rare that you'll end up paying close to the full price or even more for the bag. You can get the bag for a really great price, it's just really hard to find it. I'd seen one of these pop up and it was the pebbled leather, which at the time I didn't realize they had ever made that. I would have preferred something with a little texture, something that wouldn't show wear as much. Since I'd never seen this style of bag with that leather, I wasn't convinced that it was even real. I thought maybe somebody was trying to get away with something or it was extremely old. When I found out later that it was a real bag, it was too late, somebody had already purchased it. And then at that point, there were no more Celine 16s left. Happened to be checking a couple weeks ago because I'd narrowed down this bag. I thought, you know what? This is the perfect style. This is what I want. I don't want to pay full price unless I absolutely have to. And sure enough, there was one bag. One bag with excellent condition, no scratches, no visible damage whatsoever. And it was half the price. I want to say it was either half or a little bit less than half of the price of what I would pay at the boutique. So I didn't hesitate. I instantly purchased the bag and when it arrived, it was perfection. I'm gonna go ahead and snip the fashion file tag so I can no longer return it now. I think it's been too long anyways. It has this detachable lock right here that just hangs outside the bag, which I think is really pretty little turn lock on the front. And then when you open it up, there are several different compartments on the inside, which I really love. My old bag was not structured like this and it was just an open satchel. So I kind of like the idea of the organization in there. And then it also comes with a shoulder strap, which is amazing. So you can carry it over the shoulder or you can just carry it top handle, depending on how you would like to wear it. You can even wear it crossbody. This strap is long enough. Inside, it's fully lined with leather, all leather interior. In front of the little zipper pouch, it has a 16 and then it says made in Italy on the other side. The two main compartments are pretty spacious on the inside and you can easily fit folders, little notebooks, phone, wallet, I'll be able to get everything in here. I needed a bag that was pretty big because I like to carry everything with me. I'm an absolute pack rat whenever I leave the house. I just never like to be without something. So I always have compact, multiple lipsticks, powder, blotting sheets, tissues, hand sanitizer, shout wipes, the works, tampons. If you need it, I have it. I just love the classic shape of this bag. I think it's very timeless. If I was going to go for something structured, I'm glad I went with something like this that can just sit nicely on a table and look very elegant and sophisticated. And I don't really see this style worn out and about that often. Maybe now that I own it, I will recognize it more. The only branding it has is down here at the bottom of the lock, it has the Celine logo, but you have to really look for it. Other than that, you wouldn't necessarily know it was Celine or a luxury bag unless you're familiar with the style, which I also really like because sometimes I think a heavily branded bag, love it or hate it style wise, it can be a bit of a red flag for criminals or somebody who wants to rob you and steal your purse. So I kind of like having something that's a little bit more understated just in case it makes me feel a little bit safer carrying this out and about. And another great thing about carrying a style that's not as popular, not as trendy, is that you're not going to see a lot of fakes. You don't have a ton of dupes out there flooding the market. Now I'm sure there are very similar bags to this that you can pick up for a fraction of the cost. You could probably go to Tory Burch or Coach right now and find something similar-ish. It's not going to be exactly the same, 
but you could find something close but you're not going to find the fake Celine's, the knockoffs, the really plastic looking designer dupes from DH Gate worn all over the place, which does help maintain the integrity and the value of the bag. My plan for the afternoon is to finally complete the transfer of power. I'm gonna go through my old bag, the old broken bag that's been sitting on the floor with all of my stuff in it because I didn't have anywhere else to put it. I'm gonna finally take all of those things and transfer them to my new bag and start using this as my everyday bag. But that also means I'm going to have to be very careful, a lot more careful than I ever have been probably with any of my other bags because I really don't baby my bags. I don't throw them around and trash them either. Like I said, my old bag is still in really great condition, but this just seems like if you look at it funny, it might get a little scratch. When I was in the boutique, the sales associate who always helps me, Dawson, he was telling me about the leather that it is really durable and very high quality. A lot of people think because it's very smooth that it might be very delicate, but it's actually very thick and it doesn't have a huge, huge coat of paint or a heavy coating on there. If you scratch it, it's still going to be black. It's just going to look like a tiny scratch in the bag, but you're not necessarily going to see the scratch like you will with other brands and other types of leather. It's not an overly complicated bag on the outside. The design looks very simple. It has very sleek lines. It reminds me a bit of maybe an Hermes Kelly or the Fendi Peekaboo bag, something like that. Very classic, very standard and it will go with absolutely everything. I think this bag just elevates an outfit. This is going to elevate my entire wardrobe. One thing I'll miss about carrying this bag is the size. The size is huge, and I would carry my entire life in here, but also I would throw my camera, the camera that I'm filming on right now, I have another lens for it. E. This is the lens that I use whenever I'm taking pictures. It's very heavy and even the camera body, the camera body's not huge, but when you attach the lens, it's pretty big and heavy. I would just throw my camera in here as well and take it with me on the road and take pictures and I would have all of my stuff. I would pack equipment in here. It was so big and so durable for a really long time. If anything, it lasted a lot longer than it should have. There's a really reputable place in town, the Sunset Cobbler, I've heard is really good. So I'm gonna take this bag to them. It will probably take a while to have it fixed, so I did need a new bag, and I think it's time to upgrade the style. But I will just have this fixed and I'll hold on to it, especially because they don't even make this style anymore. I loved this bag, but you can't find it. You can't buy it anymore. I guess they discontinued it. They probably have something similar, a different tote, but this tote is amazing. I love the bag, no complaints. Since I am a matchy matchy girl and I've been carrying the Gucci wallet that matches the purse, I decided that I was going to go ahead and purchase a new Celine wallet because I just wanna upgrade everything. You know, it's a new chapter, we're turning the page, we're upgrading and I got such a great deal on the bag. I didn't feel bad splurging on the wallet. It wasn't a terrible price either. And it's really cool. It's kind of two wallets in one. They didn't have any Celine wallets on Fashion File. So inside the box, there's a little Celine pamphlet. Ooh, I'm so excited. This I have not unboxed yet. How cute. So you get the little mini dust bag that barely carries the wallet. And I did a small wallet this time. My wallet that I have right now is the full bill. It's a longer wallet. This is a small guy. Let me take this off. Also went with the black and gold, of course. Oh, goodness. See, this is what I mean. It's like two wallets in one. It's detachable. Let me reattach it really quickly. So this is the wallet. Wow, that's small. So beautiful. I love this leather. It just looks so luxe. And then you open it up. It has a couple little 
slots for your cards, bills, in case you still carry cash. <laughs> and then there's a little coin purse on the back that also has a slot for cards. So if you just need a card holder, maybe you're taking a really small bag with you, this part snaps right off. You can take just the wallet, just the card holder, or you can take them together. This is amazing. I think it is so convenient. So I love the versatility of this. I couldn't resist. I wanna say they have larger wallets as well, but nothing with this type of functionality. Just genius from Celine. And I do really love the beautiful Triumph logo. I'm not exaggerating, this is my current wallet. Busting at the seams, it is misshapen. There's so much stuff in there. Let me just peek. Is there anything I'm going to be embarrassed of? No, see, here's my lip gloss. Why I need to carry a lip gloss in my wallet when I always have 10 lip glosses in my purse, I don't know. Let's see. Here is my lucky bean. I forget what holiday they give these out. Actually, I think this is from Lafayette, not even New Orleans. I have a little baby. This is a Mardi Gras baby. <laughs> also lucky. Let's see, three Nemecolon room keys. The Lady Luck Casino Players Club card. Stamps. You never know when you might need to send a letter. Lottery ticket. This probably has some money on it. Oh, you know what? I, don't, I haven't even scratched off the bonus. Okay, so that might have some money on it. Oh my gosh, my old card from KLFY. This is funny. My very first business card when I was working in television. This I have to keep. Not necessarily keep in my wallet, but I have to keep it just for nostalgia. Empire State Building. So many memories. You can see everything I've done in my entire lifetime just from looking at my wallet. This is a note from the Bank of England. Oh, and it's ripped. Five pounds, giant nail file. Here's another coin. I think this is two pounds. Yeah, I have a little two pound coin in there. Over here, it's all the boring stuff. AAA, which saved me the other day. More casino rewards cards. Ooh, a gift card to Candleland. I need to go use that. Only a very small portion of what's in here is going to fit in here. So I'm definitely going to have to throw some stuff away. Look at the size difference. I don't know if I'm ready to make that kind of change, but I think carrying this in the Celine bag, this would take up so much room. So it's time. I'm just gonna have to throw some of that stuff away. Last but certainly not least, my Chanel dream bag. Inside it says, used is the new new, which I think is really cool. It is more sustainable than always buying new stuff. This bag did come with the original Chanel box, which is really nice. Open it up, all of the tissue, the sticker, everything else is exactly as it would come had I purchased this in a boutique. Okay, do you just want to see it? I'm just going to show you the bag. We have a fashion file dust cover and the Chanel dust cover. They also included the little piece of protective felt, which has already been removed and there would just be no reason for me to keep this. But this is my new Chanel, my little mini. She's so special and beautiful. Classic, wearable, but so delicate, which is why I said I will not be taking this out very often. But this to me is just the most beautiful Chanel bag. I am so shocked that I was even able to get my hands on this. So this was part of the Cruise collection last year. And when I spotted it, I think I saw it on the Chanel website for the first time. And I thought that is the most beautiful bag I've ever seen. I love the black and white combination. Anything, everything black and white. It's just classic, timeless. I love it. I'm a color person. I love to dress in bold colors. Of course, I live in Miami. Everything is tropical year round here. So if you were to look in my closet, you'll see a lot of pinks, blues, greens, vibrant colors. 
but I still always love a black and white neutral no color outfit. As you can see, it's a mini flat rectangle shape. And when they launched the black and white, they also had the reverse where this part was black and then it had the white stripe. They also had a black and beige. And when I visited the boutique, they had the black and beige. It was the square mini and it just isn't the same. This was the one that I fell in love with, my heart melted. And I had kind of thought, oh, it would be nice to get a white bag, but white is so difficult to take care of. So the white and the black is kind of, the perfect, I think, middle ground where it is still mostly white, so you have to be really careful with it, but it's not all white. So it's not quite as delicate as an all white bag. There was one left in the company and my poor sales associate, I must have asked her about this bag every single day. I was like, is it available? Is it available? Is it available? We tried to order it. They kept canceling the order. It still showed up as one available until finally, I guess whoever it was on hold for, they decided to go ahead and purchase it. So I could not get my hands on this bag directly from the boutique. And I did find one or two on Fashion File and they were twice the price. And there's just no way I could pay so much money for this tiny little bag, I wasn't prepared to spend more than I needed to. So I kind of pushed it out of my brain. I said, you know what, it wasn't meant to be. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to get my hands on it because I'm just not willing to pay stupid money for this bag. It's already ridiculously priced. Months went by, months and months, and I still thought about it. I was still thinking about it because to me, this is, kind of the bag that I guess what makes it so perfect is that it sort of completes my collection. I have a very small collection. I have no desire to have a room filled with luxury bags. I would rather have a few select pieces that I think are just best of the best. So in my mind, because I didn't have a white bag, I didn't have a bag that I could wear, you know, summertime with lighter things. This checked a box and it filled a hole that I had in my collection. Then one day, I happened to check and I saw it on Fashion File and I believe the condition was, I believe it was very good. It might have been excellent. I think I turned down the one that was very good. And to be honest, I did still overpay for it, but not nearly as much. In store, these run about 4,500, I believe. They're constantly changing the price. Paid a little bit more than I would have retailed, but not much. So I could justify it because at least I wasn't really overpaying for the bag. It kind of felt like, okay, if this was available in store, I would have purchased it in a heartbeat, so I might as well go ahead and pick it up. But it wasn't a new bag. This looks like somebody used it at least a little bit, not much. I mean, the corners look pristine. There's really no stains on the white leather. The hardware doesn't look scratched. You can just tell because the leather just looks a little bit older, a little bit more worn, but it doesn't look bad. I mean, it's not in bad condition at all. And the fact that there are no stains and no scratches, that to me is fine because it's not like I'm gonna stick this in a museum. <laughs> I'm going to use it too. And honestly, I'm just so thankful to the person who decided to sell it because had it, they not made that decision, then I wouldn't have had a chance to get my hands on my dream bag. For the most part, it's in perfect condition. And this to me is just the ultimate Chanel mini. Of all of the Chanel minis, this, this is the best to me. The white and the black, it's so classic. And they don't really do bags like this that often. You would think because it's white and black. They are their color codes of the house that they would constantly have white and black selections and they don't. It's very rare that they come out with a bag like this and if when they do again it will most likely be different. So I just felt like this was my shot. I needed to just go ahead and and purchase. At one point I had given up. I figured everybody who bought it loves it they knew that it was going to be a special bag and they're just going to hold on to it and keep it in their collection. But you never know because some people buy their bags and then they see something later on that they love and they decide to swap it out. 
Chanel always holds on to its value and minis can even go up in value. They just don't last in the stores. They fly off the shelves, especially if it's part of a smaller collection or an exclusive color for the year, something that's limited edition. A style like this that they don't always have, it's not like black, even solid white, you know, it's some, something that they're going to carry regularly. The combination is even more rare. I will most likely not be purchasing any luxury bags for a very, very long time. And I don't feel the need to. Now that I added this to my collection, I do kind of feel like I have everything I need. You can never go wrong with the Chanel Classic Flap. You can never go wrong with the minis from Chanel. I would wear this with a really basic outfit and then this is the standout piece. To me, this is such a special bag, but I could see how some people find it very boring, wouldn't consider it to be a dream bag. For me, it's a dream bag because I wanted it since earlier this year. It was early, early in the year that I first spotted it and it's taken me the entire year to finally get my hands on it at a decent price and still in really great condition. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked seeing the bags that I picked up. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.